My name is Brittany Johnson and I am the owner and face behind the Jamaican swimwear brand Mia Kalani Swim. Mia Kalani Swim is a luxury swimwear brand based in Kingston, Jamaica and also online at www.miakalaniswim.com. Normally, I would spend my days making swimwear and resort wear for my clients, but with the new COVID-19 virus, I have added face masks to my collection. I offer masks for both men, women and children and I also do bulk orders for businesses. There has been a huge influx of orders since I started, so much so that I have had to hire help to make them to meet the demand. This has introduced me to a whole new world where business is concerned, and I am taking everything, even the setbacks, as learning experiences. I do plan to keep face masks as a part of my collection even after the COVID-19 virus is over. The dramatic economic fallout of COVID-19 has certainly created opportunities for some SMEs. And many of you are watching today and you are wondering, what are some of the things that I can do differently with my business? Today, we're gonna to be talking about pivoting. Don't be scared of the word. We're gonna be talking about the different types of pivoting. What is this concept of business pivoting? And we're going to have with us three SMEs, very interesting SMEs that have undertaken different types of pivots. So we'll be joined by Brittany Johnson, who is a swimwear designer, who you just saw in the video, has changed her business, pivoted to making masks. We'll also be joined by Jair Lyons, who is a physiotherapist and a fitness trainer. And we'll see how he has pivoted his fitness business. We're also gonna be joined by Simone Banyan, a caterer who has done a dramatic pivot to her business, utilizing the skills that she currently has. My co-host today is none other than Nevada Powell, who is the lead architect for the PSOJ Access to Finance SME project. And you know, when we talk about SMEs, we're talking about small, medium enterprises, the enterprises that are the backbone of our economy, the backbone of employment and sustainability for our economy. So COVID cast has been, we started, this is five weeks now, five weeks ago, where we talked about the different recommendations that SMEs could undertake at that particular time. This was a week into a partial lockdown, persons working from home. We went on to talk with the banks about the different relief offerings that the banks had. And then we had experts, HR experts, telling us about managing this new workforce in this paradigm. Um, last week, we were joined by members of the Ministry of Finance and the CARE Fund project, and they talked us through the government's CARE Fund. This week, we're talking about pivoting your business. Nevada. So Nevada, we've had, with this economic follow, we've seen where various SMEs have come up with new ways of doing the business that they were in or entirely new businesses. And the words that have been, we've seen different words being banded about, but what we see is everybody's talking about this business pivot. And Absolutely. some people are asking, like, how come I don't know what this business pivot is? Or maybe I have pivoted and I don't even know that I've pivoted. So can you tell us a little bit about this concept of a business pivot? Yes. So um, thank you very much, Rochelle. It's very, very interesting and very nice to have started at the top with um, Brittany Johnson and the switch in her business. So here is someone whom um, is doing swimwear. And based on some of the photographs in the video that you saw, actually quite attractive swimwear. But what has happened to our beach weekends? Our beach weekends are not happening now. In fact, the Minister of Tourism uh, came out today and spoke about we need to stay home even though we're missing the beach. So all that Sunday lime and all of that stuff now is dead. One can imagine that Brittany Johnson is not selling as much sexy swimwear as she was two months ago, which is the normal course of business. However, if you look at what she already knows, right? She knew how to sew. She knew how to sew quite, uh, her technical skills were quite large. And when we say, well, what's needed now? Nobody's swimming, but now masks are a mandate, right? We're now in a situation where everybody has to have a mask to go outside. So. 
here is what she has done, which is what's amazing. She's taken something which was going to be basically stopped and turned it into a big business. Because right now, and we, if you heard her at the end, what did she say? She said, I'm even going to keep masks as part of my business as we go forward. So she's actually even completed a new line. The idea of the pivot is when you move from one area of focus, either your target market or your product or your customer or the way you operate to a completely different area. So in Brittany's case, is she has done what I would call a customer pivot, which meant that she was first selling sexy bikinis to attractive Jamaican women. Like myself. And now she's selling masks to pretty much everybody. Tell me about this business pivot, because this you mentioned this is a, 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 a customer pivot, which mm -hmm. suggests that there are different types of pivots. Yes, absolutely there are. So you basically different types of pivots. Right. So what we have um, what we have identified at PSOJ, based on what we are seeing with some of the SMEs, there are basically six types of pivots. The okay. first type is what we call the operational pivot, which means you're essentially doing the same business, but you're merely doing it in a, doing it from home. So what is happening? So you think about a lawyer or a social media company mm -hmm. or um, an accountant for like, a small accounting firm, right? They can actually do what they're doing now, what, what, used, what they used to do in an office, but now yeah. everybody is spread out. So their operation is now being run differently. However, um, they're basically serving the same clients, doing the same type of thing that they did, you know, pre-COVID. So it's okay. still a pivot. But it's not, um, it's not a full, what we call a full pivot. You're still serving the same customers, still delivering what it is that you used to deliver, basically. It may be a little harder. So let's be clear that even in the move from working in an office to working from home, as we spoke about before, you need different procedures, yes. different ways to make sure people incented. You need to be much more results oriented to make sure that people are as productive. But certainly your business hasn't changed. You've done an operational pivot. So that's one. If I've done like an operational pivot, can I do another pivot with an operational pivot or is it one pivot at a time? No, you can actually, it's actually really crucial that you keep looking at your business and do as many pivots as you can if you think that there is an opportunity. So okay. the fact that you may have started with this one doesn't mean you also can't be looking for other opportunities. Although I would say first make sure that you've stabilized your current business in this, in this case, because what we're finding is not everybody who has been able to do the operational pivot that easy. I was speaking to one of the small law firms um, a, a few days ago, and for example, not having all the files um, around them has actually created chaos. It wasn't as so it wasn't as easy as they thought it would have been because partly because Jamaica is still very paper based, right? So if it was a, if a law firm in, in Europe or America it probably would have been much more, much easier because everything has been scanned and stuff. But this is one of those law firms where there's a mix. So some stuff is digital and some stuff. So the files could be an issue. So make sure first you figure out how to manage in this distributed way. The second issue is you also have to recognize that different people have a different set of skills. And an employee who was very productive in an office setting may not be as productive in the home setting. And also the distractions at home so all of that stuff you actually have to work through and make sure you stabilize your business no okay that also means that there's an opportunity for for the for the for the, for the small firm who's mad, who knows how now to navigate from home they could possibly go after your clients so this is also an opportunity if you are a nimble sme now working from home recognize that some of the some of the more established players in your business may be a little off kilter you yeah. know what that means? Competition, right? Darwinian. So time to go in and start to say, well, maybe there are a bunch of unhappy clients with other with other um, companies. Who knows, right? But that's one, the operational um, pivot. Make them tell you, stop calling me. I'm funny, we're the fan. <laughs> Join us on COVIDcast JA, one of Jamaica's leading online business shows, so you can take your business to the next level. We invite you to share the knowledge and excitement offered by some of the region's top business professionals. Jamaica's productivity has been flat or declining, not flat, mm -hmm. declining for the last 20 years, mm -hmm. declining for the last 20 years. Jamaica,
15 largest festivals in Jamaica are worth 21 and a half billion. 21 and a half billion. 21 and a half billion. Don't quit your job if you don't have to. There's never a dull moment on COVID Cast JA. So join us every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube Live with host Rochelle Cameron as we uncover ways to help you pivot in these times. Remember, follow us on Instagram and Facebook and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a little description of the customer pivot. Um, I think a lot of persons think that customer pivot is simply just posting on Instagram or Facebook to say this is where our location is. I think it's a little bit more than that. Tell us right. a little bit more about the customer pivot. Okay, so the customer pivot, as again, with Brittany and as example, right? Basically, what she has done is refocused her primary market. So her, we talked about her old or primary old, um, old market. Old. Right, Nevada, just a correction. Um, I think we've been pronouncing it's Brittany and not Brittany. 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 Okay, sorry about that. Brittany, yeah. right? So her first um, market was, as we said, the woman, and now she has gone to a whole new set of customers, right? A wholesaler who only dealt with retail outlets before, now with a lot of retail outlets closed, might actually decide to go direct to consumer. That is a new customer for them because they've never served consumers directly. And we've heard wine shops and all kinds of things that have started now to go directly to consumer because mm -hmm. the regular retail outlets um, were, were, were not the same. We've heard stories of an online, somebody who does online tutoring, for example, uh, who does tutoring, who has now expanded the market because they're now online to talk yeah. about um, uh, tutoring people abroad. So it basically, the customer pivot is now your primary market is not the one that you had before COVID. You are now moving to a new um, target market, a new customer segment. And this is pretty much doing the same business that you were doing, but now you're expanding what that customer base is or actually turning to a new customer base. Turning to a new customer base. Turning to a new customer base, yes. Because yeah. the, the mask are also a new product. She's still sewing. But, but she's making another product for a whole new set of a whole new set of customers. Yeah. Or we have somebody, for example, there was a, a store. We have a Mac Tours, and what he used to do, he has a he has a, a series of route taxes, and right. he used to take people to the airport, drop kids to school, and so on. No kids going to school, nobody coming from from airport to to go home. What is he doing now? He's doing grocery delivery. Ah. So again, he's using his vehicles. But now he's where he used to serve people who go to airport and school and so on. Now he's serving people who are at home and need delivery. So uh, basically, again, that's a pivot, an entirely new different customer base with an entirely new different set of needs. I think that would be a good time for us to see um, what Banyan Catering has been doing with Easy Meals. Yeah. Introducing Banyan Catering's newest innovation. Easy Meals. All your favorite meals fully cooked, packaged, vacuum sealed and frozen. Ready to eat when you are. You can reheat using the microwave. Hot water bath. Or stove bath. A delicious home cooked meal ready in 10 minutes or less order today at banyancateringja.com and follow us on instagram and facebook at banyan catering yeah that's another good example excellent excellent again she was a caterer largely now catering i presume that when you cater she was serving people like 20 people 100 people and so on right Weddings, that's other because that's what a caterer does. Now she's doing pre-packaged meals, much smaller. So she's not doing the big 20-person event anymore because those don't exist. A 100-person event anymore, those don't exist. But she she's a very good cook, presumably, right? So now she's pivoted that to value-packed pa value pack meals. Now, many of us at home are rapidly becoming tired of our own cooking. And therefore, this arrives as an opportunity to try something new, different flavors, different things, and so on, and a different person's taste. And that's that's also fantastic. And sort of the idea that you could have a bunch of meals frozen, 
and then just take it out and cook it in those simpler ways where they, you know, it's a completely different um, way of thinking about food versus her thing before would have been waiters, waitress, organizing, go to a thing, catering, which is a is an entirely different business. So kudos to that as well. So she has shifted her customer. Tell me about another major type of pivot. So, okay, so there's what we call the platform pivot, right? Mm -hmm. And here's what that means. You used to, again, um, you, used to, you used to have a physical retail store or you used to be part of a gym where people would actually go physically to go exercise. Yeah. No, that is no longer part of what you're doing. And you have moved the entire business online. You have changed your sales and delivery platform. I was a gym before and people would come in and I would give the exercise. No, I'm offering classes online. So my delivery mechanism and the way I'm selling is completely different. So I've shifted the platform of sales and delivery. In that situation, you need things like to figure out online payment. You need to figure out your social media strategy because that's the way you're going to be selling. You mm -hmm. actually also need to figure out how you're going to change the service and product slightly. Because my guess is, again, for like a gym instructor, when you are in a room with a bunch of people, you can yell, you can take the energy, et cetera, et cetera, and so on. Know that you, you are watching them on um, online or Zoom or whatever it is. You have to energize yourself very differently. We have also seen, by the way, um, some uh, big festivals, the Today Tomorrow Festival with, with the Culture Fest that usually happens in the grill every year, which has been growing and fabulous and music and yoga because of COVID has moved its entire uh, festival online. An entire hugely different way to, to deliver as well. But many of you know um, DJ Nice, which is now the global party to be getting down. Now, DJ Nice, you have to go to New York, you have to go to Paris, you have to go to London to be part, usually, to be part of his um, his dance concert. No. I thinking that Nevada is very international, so he's telling us about New York, Paris and stuff. Right here in Jamaica on yeah. um, Sunday Pass, which should have been our carnival Sunday, Absolutely, we yes. Road march is going on in people's homes. So pretty much all of the bands had various mechanisms for person to join the road march. So this is a platform switch. So this is a re this is truly demystifying how we see business. Because when you think of something like going to the to working out and having a personal trainer, it's yeah. all about physically moving yourself somewhere or they physically coming to you. So we also have to demystify in our heads some norms that we thought because the norm is no longer we're absolutely yes. what we're learning but, that there are no norms anymore there are, no, there are no norms there are norms to be discovered right so here and again with the gym thing again this is an opportunity again to expand your base because if you actually are good at getting people motivated using this platform using the online platform no reason your customers can't be anywhere in the world no reason you can't be pushing your product, your gym class, anywhere in the world. Yes. So suddenly start to know, think about it. So the first thing that anybody's going to do, right, when you're moving the platform, you're going to say, okay, how am I going to serve my current customers? Okay. And then you make sure that they're exercising, they're doing what they need to do. And then you say, okay, I got a thing. Now I'm going to start to see if I can see got a broader group of customers in Jamaica and a broader group of customers more more all over the world. So okay. this becomes also an opportunity. In fact, it's not a it's not a end of the end of the end of the line. It's the beginning of a new line. Of a new line. And we actually have a video here from Level Up 876. Hey everyone, I'm Alexander Carrington, founder and head strength and conditioning coach at Level Up Athletic Training Systems or Level Up 876. Since COVID, Level Up like many other businesses has had to adapt to the new working environment. We've since moved all in-person services to online platforms where we now conduct all one-on-one -on -one sessions, group sessions, consultations, and even physical and dietary assessments all online for our clients. Our personalized training and diet plans have been modified extensively to match the availability of food, space, and equipment our clients have at their disposal at this time. As conditions change rapidly for some clients across the country, Level Up has had to remain agile in delivering the same high quality service we've been delivering. The transition came with a few challenges, but we've managed to keep our clients on track with their goals, engaged, and very satisfied with the new style of level. So the other thing that I think would be very good to talk about and very interested is 
a collaborative pivot. What's a collaborative yeah. pivot all about? Okay, so a collaborative pivot is when you actually do something with somebody else to expand the nature of the thing that you're offering. So for example, you broaden your product and service offering, but yes. so therefore you're therefore able to address a, a, um, a bigger market. I'll give you an example. So you have a somebody who was at um, a taxi company, mm -hmm. again, right? Who then starts working with a local farmer to deliver produce. And then the two of them hook up with a chef who will write recipes around the produce that's delivered. So suddenly, think about it now. You're not just getting, so plenty of people out there are, are, deliver grocery or deliver farm product. But in this situation, you're not just getting a farm product. You're getting the, you're buying a, a combination thing that is attractive in itself. You get the chef um, recipe to go with what it, the, the various things that you're buying. You get the delivery. So what you do now in that situation, you, you, you promote one, one package. No yeah. complication, no thing. I'm buying this thing, cost $50, whatever it is, um, uh, $5,000, $2,000, whatever it is. And then uh, it gets delivered and it's, it's, a, it's a value add, a value add beyond. Or again, a wine, sh a wine shop that says for every meal that you buy from some other thing, Banyan, for example, it would be great if Banyan was with, with a wine because that way now I don't have to make, think about it from the customer perspective. I don't have to make two purchase decisions. I can know when I buy my easy meal or I buy my whatever meal, right there is the offer that says, would you like a bottle of wine with that? I don't need to know necessarily that the wine is coming from somebody else, et cetera. But the collaborative pivot creates a more complete experience for the customer. I'm working with another SME and we are jointly marketing. Mm -hmm. We are jointly um, delivering and we are jointly offering a new kind of uh, product service together. So that becomes okay. sort of very, a very interesting way. We can also do, um, we can cross promote each other, right? Because if you are doing the wine and I'm doing meals on my website, I can talk about your wine and so on. And on your website, you can talk about my meals. So well, also, also, we are, yeah. um, yes. because we keep talking about a mindset shift for business people. So yeah. it, it's about understanding to what your business is and who your customers are. So you've reached out, you know that you still have a, a customer base and you actually even see a bigger customer base. So for example, professionals may be wondering, you know, I, I've seen a reduction in my business during this time. I need to improve. So you, you use the example earlier of a law firm. Yes. So a law firm says, wow, I really should have gotten a lot of these files digitized. With a collaborative effort, a law firm could actually link up with a, an app developer, with a technology company, yes, and yes. could offer them legal services that are paid for by the technology company offering to do the digitization. So they could Absolutely. do contracts for them, get all of their contracting together. So I think it really is, you know, when we talk about in this together, it is a way now of doing business that our minds are not just limited to this is what I do and these are the persons I work with. But to yeah. ask myself, what are the additional elements that I need now, but also what am I also going to need in the future that I can work on now? So yeah. collaboration is, 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 is tenfold, really. Let's yeah. look at example because i think when we see this next video from zane pest solutions it will help because this really is as you say it's an emotional detachment from the business that you had planned before and you were involved in and what what kind of detachment are you willing to make so let's look at this video from zane pest solutions hey i'm jody from zane pest solutions we are now offering cleaning and sanitization services due to the decline in demand for pest control service in Jamaica since COVID-19. We know we had to be creative and innovative as to how we are going to adapt to current changes. And uh, sanitizing, we know, is one of the ways we can help reduce the spread of the coronavirus. So what we have done is to leverage our assets and resources and align them to our current situation and needs. We are definitely getting a lot of inquiries 
um, for the sanitization services. So it looks promising that the demand for the service will increase. So Nevada, that's example. Yeah. tell us a little bit about your views on this kind of, of business pivot. It's it's actually fantastic because what you, and it's actually it's very hard to do because as we talked about before, the emotional attachment because every SME knows that their business is like their baby. So you kind of say that I'm swapping my child for another. And very often SMEs will also keep sinking money into a business that honestly is not necessarily worth it. But it yeah, could have been yeah. my father. It was my father's business. I've been doing this for five years. I've been doing this for, it's what I love. All of that stuff, which is relevant. But mm. at some point, you have to give the hard look and say, you know what? That particular thing really may not be appropriate now. So it's it's incredible. So she's pest thing, maybe a lot of people not doing pests. But certainly cleaning, This is, cleaning is now going to become our obsession. And that business is actually going to, even after COVID, at COVID is going to keep growing because right now everybody wants to know how everywhere is being cleaned. Questions that we never asked before. We just assume that somebody is cleaning it, but no, you, we will yes. have. To, yes, we want to know. We're going yes. to have things like the same way we had um, Intel inside, which is a piece of technology. Around the world, there are going to be cleaners where it's going to be certified, cleaned by this particular company, and we will look for a branded cleaner. So if I'm choosing a hotel, if a hotel tells me they're cleaned by, you know, service master or whatever it is, that will have a different tone than one that said, well, we're just cleaning ordinarily. So, uh -huh. so it can now become an industry standard, a certification, because this now matters to us. This matters to us where it didn't matter, you know, three, two months ago. It didn't matter to us. No, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a real thing. So big up on her that she's shifting yeah. here. And um, started to become a, a cleaning service. Asset pivot now. Every business has a set of assets, whether they're soft or hard assets. So you have a thing like you have like a you have the brand. You could have a website. You could have a storage mm -hmm. facility. You could have a set of trucks. You could have some purchasing contracts. You could have. A team, some skilled team members, right? So you have anything that you have that are assets. Assets are the things that you're using in the business to make your business run. Now, your utilization of those assets, how much you're using those assets, because of COVID, has actually slowed. So you don't do, use your delivery trucks as often. Not not much is you know if you have your physical storage space and you don't have as much yeah. storing in there, etc. Okay. You have to then think about your business, not as the entire business, but as these units of assets that you have. So, for example, if I have a warehouse, I may actually want to sublet portions of that warehouse to mm -hmm. make money. So it's not about my business, the business that I'm in. Yes. It's that I'm breaking up my assets in a way that can I sell it? Or imagine if I have trucks which usually deliver only my goods. Yes. Only I can rent truck capacity to somebody else to use my trucks. Or I have a website that actually works pretty well. I'm usually selling my own products. Why not invite two or other three people to just put their products, again, assuming it's customer um, similar, to put their products on my website for a fee, for a commission. So what I'm doing is renting the assets of my business. So because I would be, I would essentially be in whatever the core business that I'm in. In addition, I'm in a rental business. So I'm renting out all the kinds of things. Or for example, suppose I have a tea. I have a, I have, I have a company with three tech people and mm -hmm. they do a particular kind of thing. But I could also be, they build products for me and for my company. Now, one of the things I could do is rent their capacity to somebody yeah. else who needs, who needs tech people. So my business is now not only the core thing that I do, say it's building apps, I'm yeah. also renting some of my team members as tech experts to mm -hmm. other companies. So that's what, that's what we call the asset pivot. So it's yeah. beyond, think it's, that's when you think not about your business, but you look at the assets of your business. Or it could even be simply something as simple as your brand. If you have a good brand, let's say, of men's clothing, and you have a lot of loyal customers, right, who are mm -hmm. out there who buy, buy your men's clothing, 
that could be a very good way to also sell um, gym, some of the online services. That this, okay. is, this is our online um, exercise services, right? This is the recommended exercise person. He wears our clothes. We like this stuff. It's co-branded very well. So what you're doing is selling your brand as part of the offer. So the idea- This is really an opportunity that a lot of SMEs can possibly have to look at even assets now that they think, look, I have, I've invested all of this money into this particular asset, but they haven't necessarily thought of the different ways that they can monetize this asset that can actually become a new business. Exactly. So let's talk about the operational pivot, which is where you have the same line of business, but everyone is working from home. A platform yes. pivot, which is a new way of delivering sales and service. Yes. The customer pivot, entirely new customer focus. The collaborative pivot, working with another business to jointly deliver a new offering. The complete business pivot, where you're starting a completely new business. And the yes. asset pivot is renting out the assets that you have in your current business. We're joined by Brittany Johnson of Mia Kalini Swimwear. And she has pivoted her business to math. Hi, Brittany. Brittany, am I correctly pronouncing your name correctly? Yes, you are. It's Brittany. <laughs> yes. um, wonderful to see you. And our viewers are very excited to hear about <laughs> your products. We're also joined by Simone Bannon. And Simone is of Bannon Caterings and Jamosas. And now she's of Easy Meals. Hi, Simone. How are you? Hi guys. <laughs> Welcome to our show. We are also joined by Jair Lyons of 876 CrossFit. And um, Jair, I think Dr. Jair Lyons. Okay. <laughs> um, welcome to Pivot in Your Business COVID Cast Day 8. Thanks so, for having me. Yes, and we're really glad that you could um, take some time to spend with us this afternoon to share with other SMEs the kinds of business pivots you've done. So let me actually start with the gentleman. Um, okay. Jake, you, uh, you, you operate a fitness business, which is a lot about personalized training. So Can you tell us about your business pivot? So what we do is we do classes. So we are a class-based fitness program, uh, CrossFit, and we are used to running um, in-person classes of about 10 to 15 people, five classes per day. Um, but now we've moved away from that and put it online. Um, so we're now running two classes per day, um, mm -hmm. one in the morning, one in the evening. And the numbers are the same um, in terms of people attending. Um, the regular membership that we had in-house are just migrated online. As well as being online, it has actually allowed us to have those past members who may have migrated or, or ah. other people, new people who want to join us for a workout, whether in the States or in the UK or whatever, have joined us now in our workouts and things like that. So I heard Nevada talking about that and it's something that actually has happened where our reach is even further now because of this pivot. Do you want to level up your business? Level up. Join us on COVID Cast JA every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube at PSOJ Financial Access Jamaica. And don't forget to follow us on all socials to interact with our weekly polls and Q&As. Um, what have you had to change with how you operate and deliver your services? So in in the gym, we had equipment to work with, barbells, plates, dumbbells, kettlebells, etc. Um, one of the things that happened initially is that we didn't have, the people at home didn't have the equipment to work with, so we modified. Um, they used um, household items, things that they had. Some had dumbbells, some didn't. So yeah. we took a step further and offered a rental service for our equipment. So the smaller equipment, like the dumbbells and kettlebells that we could part with, um, we rented them out to the members um, who wanted, and um, they now are able to take part in the workouts. So the workouts themselves have changed a little bit um, in terms of what we can and can't do at home, but we are 
finding new ways to get things done okay. properly and the way we used to. It's not the same, but you know, again, we have to evolve. So we have changed exactly. up a lot. Nothing of is the same. Nothing is the same. Exactly. Nothing is the same. So in fact, what you have done based on the discussion that we had before, it's right. a platform pivot. Yes. A customer pivot because right. you actually are attracting new customers, but also very interestingly, an asset pivot because some persons wouldn't have had some of the equipment and you're able to rent it out. Right. That is fantastic. So let me bring Brit Brittany into the discussion. Hi, Brittany. Um, Hi, how are you? Tell us a little bit now about your, your business pivot. So why behind your business pivot and what have you seen change with your business? Sorry, what was what was the last part of the question? What have you seen change with your business? Don't worry, if you don't get, remember that part, I'll ask you again. So let's tell us about what you've well, done with your business. Well, um, I'm still, I initially started selling swimsuits. Um, that's actually some of them behind me. I don't know if you can see. Yes. Hanging up. Um, no, and no. I, I saw them from here in my showroom. Uh, and also online, I'm at miakalan.com. So I actually ship internationally. Okay. Um, nobody's buying swimsuits now because <laughs> for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. So I decided to sell some face masks. I, I decided I can already sew, so I decided to make face masks and sell them. And these are some of the some of the masks I have in stock okay. at the moment. Um, yes. And when I just started, I, pardon me. How long have you been doing the masks? Hello? We're about, how long have you been doing masks? About about five or six weeks, I okay. think. So when I just started, I thought it was going to be like a trickle here and a couple orders there and orders just came flooding in. So I actually had to hire some people to help me sew the mask because I can't handle the demand on my own. So it's been a real learning experience, you know, a bit stressful, but you know it's a good stress. It's it's a it's good, a good stress. problem to have to have you know that kind of demand. Yeah, so, and now that masks are mandatory, your 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 customer base and has has grown even more. Yes, it has grown tremendously. People that never knew who I was before are now ordering masks. So I'm using that also as a way to collect data. Yes. Um, and also contacts. So when we do, I do finally start to sell swimwear. I mean, I, I'm actually still selling swimwear. I'm getting a few orders here and there, but mm -hmm. it's mostly masks. So all the contacts that I'm making, I'm keeping them in a, in, a, in a spreadsheet to use those in the future. Okay. And I think that's a very important point that you're making, that you are now getting a wider customer base. So you're not just seeing them as mass customer base, but you're also keeping a record of these customers. And in yeah. fact, collaborate with Jair, so that when the people them get their summer body, they yes. come back. To yes, Jair, we need to talk. <laughs> and that takes us now into meals because Simone, I am tired of my own cooking. I am tired of it. Um, easy meals. Tell us about that. Hi, everyone. So, um, our business traditionally we cater to. Um, corporate because we do lunches for our corporate clients on a daily basis and as you know we do jamosas which is the manufacturing side of the business which we cater to um, retail as well as the tourism sector so as you know everybody's now working from home mm -hmm. um, tourism is at a standstill so we had to think quickly um, and the truth is, to be honest, it's a direction I've been wanting to go in yes. for a while. Um, I actually did a dry run in Christmas mm -hmm. because I wanted Christmas dinner, but I wasn't working on Christmas Day. <laughs> so <laughs> I offered a pre-packaged Christmas dinner. Um, so it, you know, that and that 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 seemed to have gone well. So it was kind of in the back of my mind to be doing these pre-packaged meals because the truth is, I mean, not everybody. Uh, uh, even though a lot of us can cook, a lot of us don't want to cook. Yeah. Um, a lot right. of us, um, we 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 lead very busy lives. Um, I run a business. I mean, especially if we have children. By the time you come home, you're tired. Yeah. Um, so the fast food, you, you still want to give your family a, a, a healthy option. 
And so it's a it's a direction I've been wanting to go in, but just really and truly, honestly, never had the time to sit down and think it through. And I had to do it in all of two weeks. Um, um, and you know, Simone, I really think that's a very important point that you've made, that you had to do this in two weeks. Because I actually, I want to have a discussion with you all now, because there's some SMEs that are saying we're five weeks in. And I still cannot figure out a business pivot. What was the kind of thought process that you went through that you identified the change that you could make? And, um, and you know, normally we go through a business plan and we work through all kind of accounting. What was your process with this kind of dramatic business pivot? Jerry, you want to start? So um, initially it was a bit um, scary because we weren't, sure of whether the, the problem was going to be solved fast or whatnot. What was important for me was that I kept con continuity with my members so that they wouldn't feel like they're lost and have the, their, usual, um, their usual routine isn't thrown off completely. Um, exercise is a big part in a lot of people's lives and you know, knowing that I, and knowing my members, I um, quickly tried to remedy the solution. Initially, we started out with just making sure they were mm -hmm. supplied with available workouts that they could do on their own. But when I checked with them, none of them were doing the workouts because they didn't have that coach or the people person in terms of working out with their friends, and which is, mm -hmm. a, big draw, which is a big draw for them. Um, for us. So we quickly went online and, you know, the first couple of classes were empty, but at the same time, the vibe was still there. And that, the, that continuation of the vibe that they had when they were in-house um, quickly allowed them to, you know, come back in and start working out once again. Okay. So, you know, it was more for the continuity for my members that drove me pretty quickly to make those changes you know okay so that yeah. that's some important points you've raised so knowing our customers is very important and i know the crossfit family is a family i know right. you've grown that family right. so your customers had to matter to you you needed to know your customers you kept in touch with your customers and when you launched first you mentioned that a fir the first couple of classes were empty so right. you didn't give up you have yeah. to keep going at it. And, and I think those are important points when we're talking about a business pivot. Like, let's not think it's just going to be magical that the change will be immediate, but we have to be dogged in our approach. And it is very important too that we have been keeping in touch with our customers. And, and Brittany, when you started with the mask, because mask, you know, we're talking about a few weeks ago, I would not have been caught dead wearing a mask on, on the street. I mean, I did not see this as an accessory. I know masks are a part of our daily attire. When you when you had to make this switch, what caused this switch? And, and who did you start out with? Your existing customers or did you just go to mask market? Sorry, you said when I had to make the switch, what? To the mask? What caused you to make that switch to the mask? Well, it was actually a friend of mine that had encouraged me to do it. I, t I made one for myself and I sent her a picture and she's like, yes, that's amazing. You need to make a flyer and, <laughs> and, and send it out to everyone. I was like, okay. So I just made a flyer and I actually, it actually got to my pediatrician uh, or who used to be my pediatrician and she sent it to all of her contacts. And then that's when everything started flooding, flooding in. And of course, Instagram and um, Twitter and, you know, social media. and then people forwarding it and it reaching everywhere and yeah and my phone just never stopped ringing it's actually ringing right now but i'm not gonna answer it <laughs> um and so you have you have developed a whole new customer base and yes. in fact you started building that customer base before mass even became mandatory so you were ahead of the game what word of advice would you give to an sme who is is asking how do i do this paper I mean, you have to just size up your what you have there and decide if you want it to continue because it mm -hmm. is not easy and it's not it's it's not for the faint of heart because you're taking yourself completely out of your normal framework. Um, just keep.
pushing, you know. Um, I, it wasn't easy and it wasn't comfortable. And mm -hmm. you have to understand that this might now be the new norm. Um, and there is no end in sight. So you can't just sit and wait until somebody says, okay, two weeks, we're going to be good. Because initially you heard two weeks and the end of the month, and then it keeps extending. So it's, you just have to make the move now if you want to continue and accept that this might be the new norm. So you have to now figure out how to operate within this new norm. Okay. Um, you know, and that's pretty much it. You have to just say, this is where we are now. Let us make it work. Yeah. Okay. Simone, what word of advice would you give? You certainly um, can't be. Are you hearing me? I'm hearing you now. I would say work with what you have because um, to start over from scratch is, is very daunting at, at this point in time. We don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know how we're going to fare on the other side. So you don't want to be spending too much of your cash. Um, I like what Nevada had spoken to earlier about collaboration. So just yesterday, um, a customer said to me, um, do you offer desserts? Um, so now I'm going to be looking to partner with people, or small businesses that do good desserts that I can, um, um, you know, put on my website because I actually had to do a website. I mean, I was sitting, I knew I needed a website like four years ago, but again, I was procrastinating on it and I had it done in two weeks. So I now have a, a website that um, it, it's not fully, it's not e-commerce yet. You can order online, but we are working on e-commerce. So that should be completed within maybe two to three weeks. And so I will have the ability to put other products. So I love the idea of the wine. So I'm, I'm going to reach out to somebody. <laughs> um, so there's the wine, there's the desserts, and then there are other things that, um, I mean, being in the industry, you know that there are people who do certain things well. So while I might not be able to take all of your products, I, I know that you do a, a wicked um, sorrel jam or sorrel jelly or something, you know, so I may create a, a specialty area on my site to accommodate, you know, um, other uh, other businesses and other um, so other people in the, in, in the industry. And so that's some excellent points, um, Simone, with collaboration. Brittany, you are a young business person. What what lessons have you learned and what advice would you actually give to, to another SME? Okay, so my advice would be to put everything online and utilize social media. So we just want to again congratulate Britt Johnson from Mia Kalini Swim. Mia, Mia Kalani. Mia Kalani, I'm sorry, yes. Mia Thank Kalani <laughs> Swimwear, who is now one of our premier makers of masks, and we can look for great things from Brittany over Thank the years to come. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations, you so much. Simone Grant from Banyan Catering for Easy Meals. I'm looking forward to my Easy Meals. You're using your aspects of your business, using your customer base, and innovating, innovating, innovating. Dr. J.R. Lyons. 876 CrossFit. I know my arm's not looking so good, but I went come and make it better. Um, really, I'm, we are particularly motivated. We have to keep pushing. And I know even as you are pushing your customers, your clients for fitness, we are doing the same thing to keep businesses fit. You've got to keep pushing, get up and get moving right away. So thank you very much to our guests. And um, we're wishing you all the best. Remember, Support our local SMEs. Buy Jamaican, support our local businesses. We have to keep them going. So we're very grateful to have you guys on and we're wishing you all the best. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So we've basically identified six ways in which you can pivot your business. Mm -hmm. There's the operational pivot, which is you're in the same line of business, but you're just working from home. There's the platform pivot, where you find a new way of delivering sales and service. So you basically went from physical to online, right? 
There's the customer pivot, where you have an entirely new customer focus. For example, the wholesale, as we said, going direct to the consumers. There's the collaborative pivot, which we got a lot of examples of that. You have meals, you hook up with a wine person, you hook up with a dessert person, you work with another in, uh, SME to jointly offer, do a new offering. There's a complete business pivot where you're starting something completely new, in no way related to the original one, and you give up the emotional attachment and just move forward. And there's an asset pivot where you actually are renting out the specific assets of your business directly. So we encourage you, please join us every week right here on our Facebook Live as we go through the various issues with our SMEs. We, we're going to have to do a show on management and leadership during covid so we're looking forward to that with me this week again was our lead project architect nevada powell um we will be utilizing this mechanism as we continue to social distance we encourage you to go to the psoj website much of the material that we discuss is here um there's also please we would like you to join our mailing list so please send us an email at sme um, at psoj.org. We're also encouraging you to utilize this as a, as a time to join the PSOJ and join our advocacy efforts for businesses across this island of ours. And this is a time that we are buying Jamaica. We are building our local businesses because we know that our SMEs are the backbone of economic growth. So join us again next week go to the psoj website please we'd like you to donate because together we will be able to make it through with so you have a great idea to start a business but you don't know where to start we completely understand you have a lot of questions and almost no answers smallbusinessportal.com is here to help at smallbusinessportal.com you gain access to information on loans, grants, and investment opportunities from verified financial institutions. Guess what you also get? Useful business tips, access to training. All these services combine to make your business idea into a reality. Start your journey today at smallbusinessportal.com.